Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna bring you another tutorial about Luminar 4. I already did one, but it was based in landscape photography and I was telling you how good AI works for this. But I did mention as well I retouched all my portrait photography work in Luminar 4 for that skin of every model and for the features of the face. So today I'm gonna focus on that. And for those who are just catching up about Luminar 4, it's a standalone software, like you can buy it and you own it, it's not by subscription at all. And if you still want to pay Adobe, like I do every single month, you can use it as a plugin. You can launch the program from Lightroom or from Photoshop. And that's what I do. I do Lightroom, Luminar, Photoshop. And that's my workflow. But if you don't want to pay a subscription because you cannot afford it or you just don't want to, just pay Luminar once and then you own it. And by a limited time, I don't know exactly how long it's gonna last, I have a link with a discount and you can grab the program for 49 pounds. So please take a look and let me know what you think in the comments below. And let's go to it, guys. So this is how your workspace will look like when you go into Luminar 4 and you add the pictures from here. Today we're gonna edit this picture, this self-portrait, because my skin this day looked very bad. So actually because it looks bad, it's gonna be easier to show you the difference with the skin and AI in this program. So let's go to it. This one is the portrait. You can tell here my pores are a bit open. They are not the best. I have a few marks in my skin, a scar here. Anyway, so we're gonna focus today just in the AI tools for portrait photography in Luminar 4. All you have to do is go to Luminar Looks over here, and you can see you have a few of them here. Some of them, I bought them, and some they come with Luminar. The portrait section is the one you want to focus on. And this one comes with Luminar 4. So you press here, you will see all these looks. But the one I want to show you is the AI Face Enhancer, which is this one, because with one click, you see already the difference. This is the before, and this is the after. You see an amazing difference already, the skin is better, it corrected the features of my face. I personally don't like to touch my features because I'm skinny naturally and I don't want to make myself skinnier, but just so you know it exists. And this is the place you want to go to, Portrait. You have here all the AI tools. So let's go to AI Skin Enhancer. And this is the skin. By default, it's in 65, which is quite good. I normally don't go over this because otherwise it's too fake, or I even go less. And then in Photoshop, or even inside Luminar 4, I clone and remove the little marks of my skin, but it doesn't soften too much the skin till the point is very fake. Anyway, for these tutorial purposes, I'm gonna push it a bit so you see the difference. So I'm gonna leave it in 70, for example. This tool is very good, it's shine removal. This is tremendously useful for flash photography because the flash creates light in the skin. In this particular case, it's quite good, but sometimes it's too much the flash. So if you push this forward, you will see, you see? it removes the sign. So it's super, super good for models who have oily skin or when there is too much flash. Just so you know, it's here. I'm not gonna use it now because I don't think it's too bad. Then here, if you press, it's gonna remove some defects of the skin, but I normally don't use it. I prefer to do it manually with the clone tool or in Photoshop. Then let's go to AI Portrait Enhancer. This is the fun part, guys. I think you're gonna enjoy a lot with this. So let's go for the first one. This is face light. If you go to the maximum, look at this. You don't have to mask anything or select. It detects where the face is and it's gonna give light. So don't overdo it. Put maybe, I'm gonna put 40. Up, oh, there you go. There you go. Then the red eye removal is in the case you have red eyes because of a flash, it will remove it. But in this case, I don't have it, so I'm not gonna touch it. Eye whitening is what it says. It's gonna make the eyes whiter when they're a bit yellow or a bit reddish. I'm gonna push it so you see. There you go. Don't overdo these things, guys, because I see so many cyborgs out there and it's not good. So I'm gonna put it in five. Then eye enhancer is very, very good. It's gonna sharpen the eyes and it's gonna accentuate the shiny part of them and the white part of them as well. Don't overdo it neither, but I'm gonna push it now for you to see. 
There you go. It's super good to focus attention in the eyes. For editorial photography, this is amazing, but I'm gonna put it just maybe in 20. It's better to do like very soft editing than very hardcore because then you can tell and it's not nice. So then dark circles removal will add a bit of white around here to cover, for example, this part of here, the shadows. So I'm gonna push it again for you to see the difference. You see, it adds like a white part here, quite soft. I don't use it much. I prefer to remove it straight away after in Photoshop if it's too bad or I don't even touch it. But it's quite good actually because it's not too, too obvious. It looks good. I'm gonna leave it in 20. A slim face. So many people are gonna love this because obviously there is so many people, men, women, who has like a more rounded face or very chubby. So if you wanna make that a bit slimmer, you can do it. I'm gonna push it for you to see. Look at this. I mean, this is way too skinny, it's awful, but it's for you to see the features. I'm gonna leave it like this because I don't like to modify the features of my face, but just so you know, you can do a little bit. If you do, do a little bit. I don't, I'm not friendly of modify faces. You can correct a bit, but don't modify because it's not you, basically. <laughs> then enlarge eyes, this is crazy. I'm not gonna touch it neither because I like my eyes, but just so you know how it works, you will see by AI how it detects the eyes and makes them bigger. This is great. I'm gonna put it maximum so you're gonna see. <laughs> this is crazy. Super unnatural, obviously, but it's for you to see. So you go down and look at that, it's crazy. So I'm gonna leave it down. Then improve eyebrows. What it would do is accentuate the shadow of the eyebrows to make them more sharp. So you will see. As well, I'm gonna push it for you to see. This is a hundred. They are super black. So I don't use it neither a lot, but it's super good for editorial photography when you really want to accentuate parts of the model. I'm gonna leave it in 20 like it was. 21, it's fine. Then lip saturation is the redness of the lips or whatever color you painted your lips with. It would move the saturation of the lips. There you go. I don't touch it because I normally play with my makeup and I don't need to touch too much, but just so you know it's here. I'm gonna put it in zero. Lips redness is more or less similar. It's gonna add red into the lips. There you go, too much. <laughs> but just put it low, I'm not gonna use it today neither. And lips darkening, just to make them darker. So there they will be darker, but I'm not gonna use it today neither. So all the way down. And then the teeth whitening. In this case, you don't see my teeth, so I cannot try it with you guys, but you will be smiling. It's like the eye whitening. It would make the teeth whiter, which is super useful because you don't have to mask all the teeth and play with the saturation like you do in Photoshop. This does it by itself, and this is great. And if you want to mask, you can do it manual as well. So this is great because if by any chance the program is not working properly in anything in particular of the face, you can still do it from here manually. But normally it works perfect, guys. I never had any problem and I edit all my portrait work with it. So once you have it like this, this would be the before and the after. It's crazy how good it is. You can play with filters, you can add adjustment layers, and you can play with filters. There is millions of them. I'm gonna use just one to show you. For that, you would go here, and you would create another layer, like in Photoshop. Plus, add new adjustment layer. And then I'm gonna try, for example, this one. There you go, in one click, you have a very nice filter there. Before and after. And you can play as well with the opacity of the look. So if you feel it's too heavy, you can move it up and down. And then you can tweak by yourself a lot of stuff here, like in Lightroom and do all you want and be original. I'm gonna leave it like that to don't be too long. And I love this feature I showed you before in another tutorial about landscapes. This is super good for you to see the difference. Look at this, the left and the right. And if you move it, you see how it is now and how it was before. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you want me to do more about Luminar 4 because I would be very happy to do them. There is a lot of tools out there that are very useful. And I will see you soon, guys.